Is everybody there? Did, did you find that? <laughs> so a lot of times I used to, you know, when I teach high school kids, I just type in string to find, you know, find the network. <laughs> and then I get all these pictures of string bikinis come up. <laughs> and so on high school, I'm like, what? And I'm like, oh crap, <laughs> no. <laughs> so maybe it's just my browser, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so you should say welcome string. Another, and again, string is a uh, European kind of creation, so which is why I love it. <laughs> like it's so nice, and they're so happy. You know, it's like welcome to string. NCBI is like, what do you want? Okay, so here it's search. Okay, you should be on this page here. Is everybody with me? Hit. What we're going to do is we're going to search for multiple proteins. So hit multiple proteins. Okay. So on multiple proteins, on the list of names, I'm going to paste my list that I just copied into that window. This is how easy it is. Like, so easy. Okay. Everybody do that. Now for organism, we're looking at humans, right? We got a bunch of human data, so hit Homo sapiens and hit select. Okay, and then we're gonna put this in. What information are we not putting in there? What's that? Correlation, yeah, we're not putting the negative correlation there. So these are all the positively correlated. And that's the thing, a lot of this software does not take like full change or any other like p-value, anything like that, which I think is very bad. I, you know, it absolutely not only matters which way your, pro, you know, your protein or gene is going, you know, based on the condition. And a lot of the software out there, especially the free stuff, does not give a crap, <laughs> which it should actually. Okay, so we've got that, hit search. This next page is just basically telling you what it recognizes, and it pretty much recognizes most of this stuff, right? So this is just saying, hey, yep, we know what you're putting in. Thanks. Now hit continue. Brown. I love that part. And that is just like... I just get giddy like when I put gene list in and when it starts coming out on like string, I'm like, oh, <laughs> like it's just really cool, right? So here are all the good guys, right? And not only that, but it's basically showing you how they're arranged. So this is this kind of networking function, right? Not only am I getting the gang, but now I know how the gang talks to each other. And this PK, PRKACA seems to be, you know, talking to a lot of people which means that it's probably very important in our system. We can click on any of these genes. CAMP dependent protein kinase catalytic subunit. That's a huge thing. That's what I, you know, when you read on the, like the, the summaries on, on STK11, absolutely CAMP dependent protein kinase is definitely on there. And in fact, you can see that to, can everybody find where SDK is? Right here. It's attached to this PRKACA, and it's also connected to CERT6. Anybody heard of the CERT genes? Sirtuins, yeah. Like they're involved in like long life, very protective. Like for a while there, I worked in an aging lab and. They thought the cert, cert genes were gonna like make us all live forever. <laughs> Didn't work out that way. But they are very good genes. So again, you know, it's going into that thing like, you know, we found the good cops, right? Here are like all these things, the majority of these things should be good for the cell, right? And that when I find things that are connected, that tells me that like this went correct, right? I'm, I'm not just pulling out random genes. And if we go down to the very bottom, and if you look at 
so legend will tell you like basically what all these things are doing the the basically nodes which are our genes in this case or proteins are connected you know what these interactions are so if you see a connection here that means that these genes are somehow there's evidence to to show that they're connected and you can cl click on those connections and see that evidence right that these two genes Basically, the software is connecting them because of gene fusions. They typically get fused together. There's also evidence of co-expression, and they've been mentioned in PubMed abstracts, right? Not all the evidence is necessarily in the literature, but we're also getting evidence based on just expression rates itself, right? So literature evidence and actual expression evidence. We can also, when we go to this analysis here, so let's go to settings actually, the one right next to it. Everybody see where I'm clicking on? We can do physical, you know, but here's what I wanna do is let's get rid of anything that isn't bound to something in the network. So if I go all the way to the end, again, you can do all of these, all of these settings, you can make your confidence that it's, it's connecting higher or lower, give it more confidence that there's truly a relationship there. Do all these things, but go down to hide. It says high disconnected nodes in the network. So when it says advanced setting, network display options, click on high disconnected nodes in the network and hit update. Just gives us a lot easier to see in my opinion. If you want my opinion, this is STK11's gang. Absolutely. And I bet you won't find, you might find parts of these things in other like pathways, but in my mind, like this is the true signaling pathway in lung cancer. Remember, we got this network from a lung cancer database. Like this is absolutely what SDK11 is probably doing in these lung cancers, right? And these are the, the individuals it needs to like, do its activity. Okay, so we can look here on settings. Now let's go to the next one, which is analysis. Right? If we look, we've got, it recognized 198 of these genes that we put in, the gene symbols we put in. Only two of them it didn't recognize. And that's, that's actually very, very normal. Uh, it expected, we expected 151 connections, right? But we actually got 245 connections. Just not based on random chance, you would expect, yeah, maybe 151 of them will connect. But 245 of them will connect. The odds of that happening are like 1.9 times 10 to the negative 12. Like this isn't random chance. What we just pulled out is something that you don't see by random chance, which means that this is probably activated like network of genes centered around STK11 that are doing something in these cells. We can look for biological processes. Remember, if I study all the best friends of something, you know, and what they do, that thing that I want to study, that's probably doing the same thing. And we can look through here and actually color this stuff. Positive regulation of apoptotic processes. Well, that makes sense. We can also, what I would do is, you know, we can put in the ones that have the highest count. So let's go in this count in network, or actually on strength, hit the strength button. Oh, wait, no, don't hit the strength button. Hit count in network um, so that it shows the highest ones. So right now, like the highest one, 170 of these are involved in cellular processes. That doesn't really talk, tell me much. But now as we start going down, response to stimulus, so again, cell cycle, cell communication, regulation of cell, cell function, signaling, and positive regulation of metabolic processes. So I can color that. Say I wanna say, okay, that, I'm gonna make those red. Let's say response to stress, I'm gonna make blue. And you can just keep going down here. Immune system processes. I'm gonna click on that one. That'll be green. Going down, positive regulation, metabolic again, coming up, response to cytokine, regulation of cell death, regulation of leukocyte activation, again, immune kind of stuff, cell signal. 
regulation of meiotics, mitotic cell cycle, right? And as I color these, you can come up to the network and now you see them that way. So if I didn't know anything about this network, who do you think I, where are gonna be the godfathers? What do you think based on what I've just done, where are you looking for the godfathers at? What do you think the godfathers are? Multi-shaded? Multi-shaded, yeah. But they're probably doing a lot of different things. Absolutely, right? Again, we look at this PRKACA, look how many colors it has. And look how many things it's bound to. That is the one thing I want to stress to you. If you get anything out of this course, it's I've seen so many people, they'll do an experiment, do the gene expression changes, and then they go, well, this gene had the highest gene, change in expression, therefore it must be the most important. Have you guys seen that? Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> it can kind of help judge you, but really what you want is it's not the thing, like if you go from almost nothing to something, it's a huge, huge like change in expression, right? If I start with a unit of one and I go up two arbitrary units to three, that's a threefold increase, right? Now say if I start with a thousand arbitrary units and I go up to say 1200 arbitrary units, I've just changed 200 units, but that's only a 1.2 fold change, right? People are gonna think, wait, which one would you rather believe? The one that started at one and went up two or the one that started at 1,000 and went up 200? I'm, I'm believing the 200 one, right? You can have a lot of variation. Like the thing is, is fold change is basically you're dividing by the denominator, right? If your denominator is incredibly small, it's gonna, you're gonna see that your full change is gonna be inflated. But it's not that big of a change, but you're gonna see it that way. So I guess what I'm saying is, it's not only things that change a lot, but it's also things that, you know, when you put it through software like this, it's things that also are affecting other things, right? I go through here and I go, oh man, well, what is this? You know, and it's bound to SDK 11, the thing that we actually looked at, it actually has more connections. And we see this a lot in cancer genomics. I see it so much, you know, people will focus on this gene, but really <laughs> this, this particular protein or gene is actually, you know, basically giving all its functions to something else. It's like inducing something that's actually really doing the work. And that's really what you kind of want to study is like when we're looking at these things is to look for things like that. Yeah, and these, these things you can, you know, we can color it anything we want. We can go down here, we can look at, I, I think this is awesome. It's this reference publication, PubMed. It's like chromosomes with, so what it's doing is it's basically telling you that, you know, it found a, a manuscript that mentions these genes, right? And in this one, it, it mentioned 48 and 12 of them are, are also in our gene list. And that the odds of that happening are 9.2 times 10 to the negative, you know, uh, you know, negative eighth, right? And if we click on it, if you click on this, this article, it's all about deletion, and it's that putz jaeger syndrome, which is absolutely mentioned with the STK11 gene when we look at the description, right? Right, and now it's it's basically what it did was find, you know, based on this, it found its network associated with it. We found our own and there's absolutely and utterly similarities. Like this stuff works, <laughs> right? I started with a gene list that was correlated to STK11. Now I'm, I'm at a paper which mentions a lot of these genes, which absolutely mentions a disease that this gene is known to be associated with. And everybody think that's cool. <laughs> this is cool. Again, I didn't even start with anything. Like I didn't generate crap, right? You can basically get to this point, you know, <clears throat> I can learn a ton about any basically cancer I want or a gene I want in a matter of hours, right? And I don't have to do experiments. 
right? I don't have to read a bunch of papers. I can actually go and look at like, what are the genes that are correlated to this? What does the actual data have to say? And then basically do my own interpretation of it. And I guarantee you it's gonna be a lot different than what's written in your you know, textbooks, right? Because this is new. Like we're doing this, this is like data that's generating now. Um, okay, so here's what I want to do is, so these are the, these are the good guys, right? The good people, the cops. Let's go take a look at the robbers. So go back to our Excel spreadsheet. Okay, and your R value column, instead of sorting uh, largest to smallest, let's sort smallest to largest. Your top gene should be PDE 4D. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight that first gene, PDE 4D on row B, go all the way down to 201. Hit shift, and then copy that. Okay, go back to our browser. Um, you can leave this one up here. You know, you can maybe get another different, different window, string, multiple proteins. So is everybody at this window? Paste your list in, just do the same thing. Yep, homo sapiens, got it, search. Yeah, recognizing stuff, hit continue. Now here are the bad guys. Right, now we can look and see what the heck the bad guys are doing. I bet they're doing something different than the good guys. Seller response to jasminic acid, wow. Okay, so we hit more here. Um, usually I like to look at the things in like the most, so I always like sort by count from largest to smallest. Metabolic, organic, substance, me metabolic. There's a lot of metabolism. Biosynthetic process, transport, lipid metabolic process, drug metabolic. Wow. I haven't looked at all this stuff, so. Like some of this is a surprise. You see a lot of mitochondrial, a lot of TCA cycle. What's going on? What do you think these genes are doing that are helping the cancer? Any ideas? Yes, absolutely, right? So again, when these genes, when SDK is, is high, these genes are low, right? It's that pull, right? When these genes go up, SDK 11 and its buddies go down. This is basically, if you look here, I, when I first did this, I thought, well, I'm, I'm gonna see a lot of cell cycle stuff. You don't really do that. What you're actually seeing are basically what these things are doing are upregulating metabolism of these cells to produce more energy so that they can divide more. Totally. Like I, think, I just think this is fascinating. And again, look how tightly these things are bound. Like we, you know, RAB1A, I'm sure people have heard of the RAB genes in cancer, or some of you have. You know, if, if you look through here, you can see some of the rock stars in, in like different forms of cancer are definitely here. Again, this is probably, you know, this is the side against STK11, you know, and this is probably the true signaling pathway from this, this little thing. We can go down here again. Yeah, it's just amazing. This is all about transport. It's all about producing, generating ATP for the cell to divide more. And I think Goldie transport, mitochondria, look at all this. This is crazy. Catalytic activity. Oh, wait, wasn't it? 
wasn't that gene that we call it was LK bit LKB one wasn't STK 11 called that I think so if you look here in the publications associated with this list look at this or me this is the first time I saw this I'll keep A1. So again, STK11 wasn't even in this list, right? These are the things that are negative. Loss induces characteristic patterns of gene expression in human tumors associated with NERF2 and activation attenuation of PI3K AKT. And we're also seeing, I think the, no, is it that particular one in there? No. But you can see KRAS. So this is, you know, honestly, this is kind of, this is what I do. Like, and I would say that I, I'm sure some of you guys work out there that like, does, do any of you work for a lab that like to focuses on one gene or one pathway? Yes, no. I've seen there are a lots and lots of like, like labs out there, they're just like, we're the KRAS lab or we're like the EGFR resistant tumor lab or, you know, whatever. You know, I, I think that's old school. Like, I think what happens is, and if you have a lab that does that, if it focuses on one thing, then everything that, all the data that you generate, and I've seen this so much, gets funneled through that particular gene or pathway. And I think it's wrong. I hate it when I analyze somebody, somebody did like, you know, some cancer person has done this, you know, experiment where they're actually, you know, seeing the gene expression of all the genes at the same time. And the first question they ask me is, so what did my gene do? <laughs> You're like, who cares, man? <laughs> like there's thousands of other genes, right? What, what you really want to do for bioinformatics, and I think this is what people have done in the past, is they use bioinformatics to just kind of try to support whatever they thought beforehand, right? They're just using it as support for something they already believed. What you really should use bioinformatics for is exploratory, right? Is what I do is I'll do an experiment, you know, you get the gene list and you just throw it through software like we just did and I can show you some other things you can throw these gene lists through to get you an idea. What you want is the data to guide you. And what I see most labs doing now is they get the data and they take it by the nose or the ear and they go, you're gonna do this. You know, <laughs> like, I want you to see this. Rather than like, let's just see what it tells us, right? Let the data guide you. You know, and I think if you start off with, the, you know, already the opinion or the, you know, that our lab works on this, you're gonna see everything through that lens. Right? And I don't think that's necessarily right.